Hi everyone, today we have several fourth year medical students here to share their favorite study resources for ob -GYN, the schedule they use to do well on their rotations, and just general tips so you can do well on your third year clerkships. What study resources do you recommend for this rotation? As for the questions, I used UWorld and then I also used um, APGO UI's questions or something. You can Google this and find the questions. I found the UI's questions to be really, really helpful. There were, there's 500 questions um, and I went through all of them and I just felt like they were very NBME shelf style. And of course the UWorld questions that were really good as always. I use pretest for some of my resources. This is one where I felt like OB-GYN um, pretest wasn't that great. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend it. Um, in addition to that, I used Anki clerkships deck. ob -GYN was one of those rotations where I didn't know a lot. Um, my first two years didn't really prepare me for a rotation like ob -GYN because it's so clinical and so different from everything else I've learned. Um, so I used a lot of OME for very basic topics that I didn't really know um, in my other rotations. So things like labor and delivery or like, you know, first trimester bleeding. Um, I felt like even though sometimes I feel like OME is very basic, I felt like I needed that basis. Uh, so I watched a lot of the videos the first week of ob -GYN. Do the UWorld questions like you do for every single one. Do the MBME questions for every single one. And do other resources, there's a couple of other books out there that are okay, but really nothing compares to that as the UWorld, MBME, and then AMBOSS I found to be pretty good as well. So OB was my first rotation. It feels like forever ago. Uh, again, UWorld, just always UWorld. Uh, and then online medit, I did use a lot for this one just because in the first two years we got Gyne. I felt pretty good about the Gyne side going in because of repro and I'd just taken step one. But for the OB stuff, a lot of that was pretty new. So online medit was good just to get a basic understanding. That little red book uh, for OB, I bought and it was great. It was nice to have as a resource in my pocket to just brush up on things like stages of labor and signs of infection, postpartum, things like that. And then um, besides UWorld and online meded, that was pretty much, that was pretty much my, those are my go-tos and that was enough. It was a six week rotation for us, so not a lot of time. Definitely UWorld, start there. Um, I really liked online meded. I used that in the car because there's just a lecture series. So I was driving about 35 minutes one way to get to my OBGYN shifts every day. So if I had 30 minutes in the car, that's like two lectures I could get through. And then coming back home, that'd be like another two lectures. So I tried to do some lectures in the car, some UWorld when I got home, a little bit of extra reading. OBGYN is really fun. Um, I used blueprints, which I really liked. Um, mine is old because I'm cheap and I didn't want to pay for a new edition and this one was fine. I think it was like 10 or $15 on Amazon. Um, I used that a lot. I used UWorld per usual and then I used, um, there's like this little, I think it's a red book that people use and they talk about a lot. I never bought it because I just didn't want to pay the money for it, but I looked at other people's versions whenever I had questions and then I used a lot of up to date because ob -GYN, the rules are changing pretty much constantly in terms of like pap smears and when you're doing things and when you're not and what to do next. So I had to rely a lot on the internet for that, but I used this book was really, really, really helpful for me. So ob -GYN is probably the rotation I found most difficult just because it was different than the other ones. Um, it's the same thing, started off with case files, pretest. Well, actually pretest for ob -GYN I found wasn't as helpful, but case files, UWorld obviously is pretty high yield. And then our school bought us a subscription to UIs, which I thought was pretty helpful. It broke down questions. There's like 10 questions in each block and it has it separated through different topics. Like it has the guide stuff separated from the OB stuff and then OB will have like screening tests or difficult um, deliveries or C-sections and it'll have questions based on all of those. But it's going to be the same thing, just trying to study and make sure you're reading up on stuff every single day. How did you schedule your studying for this rotation? A lot of it was in the morning before I went to my rotation and also in the evening. Especially when you're in labor and delivery, you have a lot of downtime uh, while you're waiting for babies to be born. So um, I definitely tried to be uh, good about my time and not waste time uh, while I'm waiting in the doctor's lounge or whatever. Instead, I'd pop out my laptop and start doing questions or Anki cards at least. Scheduling study for ob -GYN was pretty hard because every day and every week was different in ob -GYN. Some days you were in the clinic, which is easy. So you go nine to five, even sometimes like nine to noon, you go home and you can study a whole lot. 
Other days you have to be on L&D wards and that means you have to actually be there from 6 a.m. to sometimes 7 p.m. depending on who's delivering when or if people deliver or sometimes you leave early if no one's delivering. That was one of the most flexible ones and didn't really have a great study schedule unfortunately. I studied on lunch breaks, which I, going back, I think I would have just rather enjoyed my lunch breaks. This is a little break in the day. Uh, and then I would study at the end of the day. I actually had to take that shelf a little early, I had to take it a week early. And so I just split up. I divided my five weeks before my shelf by how many U World questions there were, made sure I did at least that many U World questions a day. And then um, I actually got through case files too with that one. And so it was, it was just a matter of, you really have to push at the end of the day. It, it's hard, but it's kind of the only way I could find to get everything in without making my weekends completely unbearable. Try to maximize your weekends. Uh, depending on your rotation, some OBGYN uh, rotations, you're there a little bit longer. Some you're, you get off a little earlier. You kind of have to adjust. If you have more time when you get off earlier, you want to try and take advantage of that. It's really tempting to just get off and go home and relax and really enjoy it. But you try to you need to try to think about that as an opportunity to study rather than like oh you got a break. Studying so OBN is actually a little bit easier because it's a lot more clinic time for us at least. So you get downtime during the day. A lot of the clinic places that we rotate in uh, have pretty chill schedules because the people are off doing surgeries and delivering, and sometimes they want you to go with, and then you have a busy day, and sometimes they don't, and then you just have a lot of time off. And then same thing, when you're on call delivering, um, you often get a lot of free time during the day if no one's delivering. So you using that time in your hospital, in the hospital really wisely, and either bringing a book with you, which is fine, or doing questions or something on your phone, and whatever you're more comfortable with, it's a little bit easier. It was a little difficult for me. So I tried to watch the first week, just because a lot of that stuff was new to me. I didn't see it on my other rotations. I tried to just watch through most of the online meta videos, especially for the OB stuff. So I had one pass through it. Uh, once I had that, I kind of had a base kind of knowledge of the terms and stuff they use in OB, and then I just tried to rewatch those and then keep reading case files. Um, but definitely OB and OB gun was one of the tougher subjects for me. What general tips would you recommend to do well on this rotation? I'd recommend um, doing a lot of practice questions. I think OB gun is a difficult rotation for med students because, um, like I said, there's not that much, you don't have a great basis going into the rotation, and there's a lot of new knowledge to learn. Um, so I recommend doing a lot of practice questions. It seems scary when you're in labor and delivery and you have to like learn the six cardinal signs of birth and things like that. But I think the preceptors are really good at teaching you hands on. And so I felt like I didn't really need to learn my like um, have a good hold on the practical skills. Um, in that in that rotation as much as something like surgery, for example. But if you're really interested and want to, you know, want to be a stellar student, I'd recommend maybe practicing suturing and all that before that rotation as well, since it is a surgery rotation. Know the stages of labor. Know the common problems that are going to arise from when the woman hits the door and is in labor or has a premature rupture of membranes to when they're discharged. Know, like, know what the little common changes are. Know what to look for. Know how to read a fetal heart tracing know how to evaluate a post-op patient and a, a post-surgical patient because every mother who is delivered or has um, undergone a c-section is essentially a post-surgical patient so you have to be able to know what's important for them so i loved my ob rotation i you know we got to deliver babies and i really loved you know helping out with women's health and i think OB gets a bad rap for being a little bit more malignant than the other specialties. And where I was, I didn't, I didn't see any of that really, but um, I would say it's sort of similar to surgery where you'll probably be in the OR at least for a little bit of your rotation, whether it's for C-sections or hysterectomies. So know your anatomy, all those ovarian ligaments and round ligaments and all of that, because uh, you'll get pimped on it. The artery of Samson or whatever, they like to ask about that. And then um, your sterile technique, again, because you don't want to be the person that, that ruins a sterile field. Not a good feeling. Uh, and other than that, I would say just show up and be interested. I know it's a lot of my male classmates had trouble with OB because sometimes the patients won't let you in the room. Um, a lot of them, I don't know, I think feel intimidated. Uh, with women's health and delivering babies and, you know, 
all that. And so I think as if you show an interest and if you're a professional and you're warm to your patients, I think that always goes a long way. And uh, I don't think that can be underestimated. If you show up and you're aloof and you don't really seem like you want to be there, that's the, that's the feeling the preceptors are left with. And that's what they'll write up on your eval. And so uh, I, I think just going in every day as if it's a specialty that you're interested in is, is really important. Definitely pay attention while you're on your rotations. I think OBGYN was one of the specific rotations where I felt like I learned a lot actually just being there and actually doing the exams and doing, you know, the C-sections and removing fibroids, those kind of surgeries. I think more than a lot of other rotations where you're forced to kind of do all of your learning when you get home and like studying more on your own. I think if you're a little more involved and you try to really participate in what's going on when you're on your rotation at OB, I think it really helps you learn the material A, but then uh, sort of associate conditions with people that you see uh, when you're actually in clinic. Act excited. They they want you to dive in, especially delivering. Like if you, it's a lot of what you make of it. You have to put your own effort in, otherwise it's going to be really boring. Same with like doing pelvic exams, anything like that. Just get, you got to be like gung ho about it and be like, yes, I would love to do this. Even if you've done like 50 pap smears already, it's still worth doing another one. Everyone's different. The way you talk with the people that you're treating is different. Um, and then again, just like consistently studying. It can be a little hard because you're, cha especially at our school, you're like changing where you are every day or two and you're kind of figuring it all out. Um, that can be a struggle, but just kind of roll in with it as much as you can. The big thing, especially when labor, labor and delivery, ask the nurses. Um, you may have midwives that you're working with. Um, they're gonna know a lot and they're gonna be able to help you a lot because it can be a little intimidating, especially if they just throw you in and be like, okay, you're gonna do this delivery and we're gonna watch. So ask the nurses, they know a lot and they'll be able to help you.